The movie starts with Anne, an accomplished lawyer, returning home to her husband, Peter, a psychiatrist. Anne and Peter's union is blessed with two female children, Frida and Fanny, while Peter has a son, Gustav, with his ex-wife, Rebecca. Gustav has been suspended from school and his mother, Rebecca, wants to send him to a boarding school, so Peter asks to take the child in. Peter travels to bring Gustav and his daughters are excited to have a brother. They give him several gifts and welcome him joyfully. However, Gustav doesn't feel comfortable with this relationship as he isn't familiar with Peter because they have been separated for a while. The family dines together for the first time, after which Anne goes to work. As Anne returns home, she sees Gustav's keychain on the floor and she picks it up and takes it inside the house. She enters Gustav's room to pick up his used plate. Moments later, Gustav comes out of the bathroom and she asks him about a book he is reading. The following day, while returning home, Anne overhears an argument between Gustav and Peter. Gustav asks for an opportunity to live alone as he insists he doesn't want to stay with them. Peter refuses as he is still a minor. Gustav walks away from the house that day because he doesn't like the family. That night, Peter tells Anne he will return Gustav to Rebecca, but she convinces him otherwise. She explains that Gustav isn't familiar with them, and they can help him feel more comfortable by involving him in household tasks. Anne represents her client in a court case the next day. After the case, she encourages her client and meets her defendant at the car park. She asks him if he thinks his actions are right before leaving the court. She returns home to a broken house, missing personal belongings, including her bag. She calls the police to report the break-in and burglary. After a brutal day at work, Anne returns home early to do her kid's laundry. In the process, she checks Gustav's pocket and sees his keychain. She remembers finding the same keychain on the floor the last time she visited his room and didn't return it. So it was in her bag, and her bag was stolen. She immediately connects the dots and realizes it was Gustav who stole from them and disguised it as a break-in. She confronts him about breaking into the house and shows him the keychain as evidence. She asks him to either report to his father and they go to the police station or she will keep quiet about it. And he will blend in with the family. Left with no choice, he reluctantly chooses to be part of the family. He starts playing with the kids and his relationship with the family grows closer. Peter notices this change in his son and he is happy for him. The kids also like Gustav as he has become a brother figure to them. To Anne, she hopes Gustav has sincerely changed and won't cause any trouble again. That night while Anne is working overnight, Gustav comes into the house with his girlfriend named Amanda. He introduces Amanda to Anne, and Anne talks to her before the two young lovers leave. She overhears the lovers having intercourse. She gets turned on by the noises. She returns to her room afterward looking at herself naked in the mirror and wonders if she is still attractive to men. The family takes a vacation on the beach while the kids play in the water. Anne is busy with work. Gustav comes to call her and asks her to join them in the water and she eventually does. She changes to her swimsuit and they all play in the water. They leave that evening and the daughters are already asleep. That night, Anne and Gustav engage in a heart-to-heart -heart conversation while having their drinks. She asks him if he misses Stockholm. He explains to her that he never really had any close friends in Stockholm and there is no one he can invite to visit him in his new home. Anne expresses her wish to get a tattoo, so he helps her with one before they depart for the night. Their family hosts some friends that weekend. Anne doesn't feel comfortable in the gathering, so she walks downstairs and sits alone. But Gustav comes to meet her. He tells her he is going for a walk to get a cigarette, and she feels it's a great time for her to leave the gathering too. So she asks him to go with him. She follows him to the bar, and they have a few drinks together, after which she kisses him. They return home separately and Peter gets angry at Anne for leaving the guest alone and going out on a walk without informing him or taking her phone. He tells her it is disrespectful not only to him, but to the guest. And even if she wants to do such, she should at least be contactable. That day, while the kids are playing, Gustav and Anne have another emotional and romantic encounter, and Anne becomes attracted to him. Sometimes later, Peter goes on a business trip and leaves Anne in charge of the house. At night, Anne grows restless, and she walks around the house. She goes to Gustav's room and finds him awake too. She puts her hands into his shorts and strokes his private area. 
He moans silently at her touch, and he gets turned on. She proceeds to kneel, prompting him to start intercourse with her. They finish their intimate moments silently, and she kisses him before going back to her room. The following day, she goes to a computer store and buys a laptop for Gustav. She informs Peter about it, and he says she should discuss it with him first, but she doesn't agree. He apologizes and appreciates her for being nice. That night, Anne tries to get intimate with Peter, but she doesn't seem to enjoy it. In the next scene, while Peter is away, Anne keeps her children in the sitting room, and she gets intimate with Gustav in the bathroom. While they are still actively engaging in intercourse, Peter returns home early that day. When they hear his voice talking to the kids, they stop what they are doing. She meets Peter, who tells her he was disturbed at work and felt he should return home. Again, they are having intercourse when Peter is at work. It's Frida and Fanny's birthday, and the house is full of guests. During the party, Gustav can't take his eyes off Anne, and he looks for opportunities to make out with her. When Anne goes to make some preparations, Gustav comes to her and kisses her. She tries to dissuade him, saying it's not the right place or time, but he insists. No one can see them. Unfortunately, Lena, Anne's sister, walks into them and catches them in the act. Lena walks away immediately. Anne pushes Gustav away and goes to beg Lena, but Lena insists she is leaving her home and reminds her Gustav is still a minor. As a result, she decides to ignore Gustav throughout the day. Gustav, who doesn't appreciate being ignored, confronts her about it, and she immediately ends the relationship. Gustav gets angry and climbs a tree to disturb the whole party. He falls off the tree, and Peter runs to his rescue. However, Gustav starts laughing, saying it's a prank, which angers Peter. This act disturbs Peter, who asks Anne what to do, and Anne suggests they should employ other means than keeping him in their home. Anne and Gustav meet in the woods, where she officially breaks their relationship while agreeing not to let Peter know what has happened. The following day, Peter informs Anne of his desire to mend his estranged relationship with Gustav by going on a cabin vacation, and she approves of the idea. While he's away, she visits her sister Lena and begs Lena not to tell her husband what she knows. Lena refuses to pity her and tells her she doesn't want to see her again. She returns home and finds out her husband has returned, which is shocking because they aren't expected to return until two days. That night, Peter tells her about his son wanting to attend a boarding school and also reveals about knowing her secret affair with Gustav. Anne gets angry. She pretends to be ignorant, claiming she has never done something like that, and starts packing her loads. Anne refuses to let him and his son falsely accuse her. She also informs Peter that Gustav was the one who broke into their home, but she didn't tell him because she wanted a healthy family relationship. Peter feels apologetic and decides to trust her words. The following day, Peter calls a meeting between Anne and Gustav and accuses Gustav of lying about the secret affair. Again, Anne denies all accusations. Refusing to give in, Gustav feels unjust and spits on Anne's face, and he is disappointed that his father chose to believe Anne instead of him. The following day, the kids bid their farewell to Gustav before Peter drives him to the boarding school. On Christmas Day, as Anne resumes work, she finds Gustav in her office. He tells her to confess to his father and tells him he isn't lying. Otherwise, he will report him to the authorities for assaulting a minor. She tells him he has no case and no one will believe someone like him. So he should move on. Anne returns home and they celebrate Christmas. Later that night, Gustav visits to see his father, but she sends him away because Peter is asleep. Gustav breaks down on the road, but she doesn't care. On her next birthday, the family celebrates on her behalf, and Peter receives a call from Rebecca that Gustav has been missing since Christmas break. But he assumes it is nothing because Gustav is known for such pranks. Some months later, he gets a call from Stockholm police to visit, and when he returns, he tells Anne Gustav has been found dead in the woods. Turns out that after the encounter she had with him on Christmas night, he went to the cabin, but the freezing temperature was uncontrollable, so he did not survive that night. She goes to the bathroom to cry, and then returns to comfort her husband that it isn't his fault. But Peter stops her from talking and closes her mouth. The family continues their lives after this brutal news. They all travel dressed in black to attend Gustav's funeral as the movie ends. 
Subscribe to watch more videos like this, leave a like to help the channel out, also leave a comment if you'd like us to recap your favorite movie. Thanks for watching.